In this image matching tutorial, I'm going to show you the basics of using FSpy. FSpy is a great open source image matching software that can be used to export photo matched cameras to Maya or Blender that then you can use to make scaled and accurate 3D models and also use for digital compositing. First thing to do is open FSpy. You need to download FSpy and install it. I have a video linked in the description showing you how to download FSpy. Then you need to have some photos that you want to match. Here I have a number of photos. FSpy works with one point, two point, and three point perspective. Let's go ahead and bring in an alley one point perspective image. So here we have our photo that is dropped in. By default, it'll be dim. Sometimes this is helpful to see, other times it's not. So I'm going to go ahead and turn off the dim image. As you look here, we have these green and red lines. These are going to help us match up the perspective. But in this particular case, we only have a single point perspective. One of the most common mistakes in FSpy is not having the correct perspective for the image, trying to use two point perspective when you really have a single point perspective image. So over here on the left in FSpy, we have a number of vanishing points. We can select two or one, and then we can choose which axes we want to use. We'll talk about reference distance when we're talking about scaling the image. And the principal point, this is by default when you take a picture with your camera in the middle of the camera sensor, and you don't have to do anything unless you know the image you're using has been cropped. If it's your image, you should be able to know if you've cropped it or not. If it's an image you're using from something else that you're trying to match, well then you need to be able to set the principal point too. We'll show you how to do that. And lastly, we have rectangular mode. So instead of setting two axes, you can click this and you actually draw out a rectangle. So you would move this rectangle. For example, we have this door here, so I can move these points to this door and then it's gonna set up the perspective of the scene based on this cabinet right here in the alley. And so then I need to move this piece. Oh, I see I have that one right there. And then if I move this down to basically where that is on that door, then I have that set up for the perspective. We can't move outside the photo there, so this would not be the best element to use. But we're not going to use rectangular mode for this first image. This is a one point perspective image in an alley. So up at the top here, I'm going to switch to number of vanishing points to one. So now you'll notice that I just have uh, this line here is perfectly uh, horizontal. So this is going to be our horizon line. And then these two lines are going to be our perspective lines. So I want to drag this over here and I can press and hold shift. And what that's going to do is zoom in and slow down my mouse so I can be a bit more accurate. Now, this alley is not a perfect geometric shape. So I can go ahead and kind of eyeball where I think those lines are going to be for fixed finishing up the alley. And then for this one, I want to make it as long as possible. So I want to drag all the way down to there. And then I want to bring this back out to the ground plane and probably hit right about there. Now on a single point perspective image, what I can do now is I can move this cursor around and check. So I can put it right on this window and then I can put it right on this awning and I can see if I'm accurate. And as you can see, all these perspective points are converging right here. If I move back over, this door is working really well. If I move it up to the sides, it works well. And that's really what you want to check. You want to check these extremes. So if I come up to this window here, the perspective gets distorted more on the extremes. On this particular image, since I can't see the actual vanishing points, it's okay to tweak it a little bit here and see if I can get something that looks a little bit more reasonable based on the distance. I think that's pretty good. I might move this just a little bit in but no i think it looks good as it is and then i'll move this one more time around just to check that everything is looking good you can see how that piece of paper holding these rocks just lines up now it's not going to line up to this because that's actually a rotated object but it will line up pretty well to this mat on the ground and once again you can see how the street curves down so that's why that doesn't line up there the next thing you need to do is make sure you place this point where you want the origin. You don't want to place it up in this air. You want to place it nice and low on the ground plane. So now we have everything set up for this and we could go ahead and then go file and we can export this camera parameters as a JSON. So we'll go ahead and export that. 
And then we're going to save it as, we'll save it as Alley Camera FSpy. Then we can use that document in Maya or Blender to be able to do some 3D modeling. Let's take a look at another image in FSpy. So we'll go ahead and close this one and we're not gonna save the project. And then we'll go File New. So this will be a new project. We'll go to our Match Photos and let's go ahead and look at a two-point perspective. So we'll go ahead and bring in this Subway two-point perspective. So once again, the image will come in dimmed. And so I'm gonna turn that off. And so here you can see that we have perspective lines going this way and perspective lines going this way. So probably the lines going across the subway tiles here are going to be the same as the columns. Now, in reality, nothing is a perfect geometric shape like it is in your 3D modeling program, but we can get a pretty good idea. And it's safe to assume that these columns are pretty much in line. So we wanna make sure we choose two as the number of vanishing points. And then we'll go ahead and start placing our points. We can start with any color you want. I'm gonna go ahead and start with the red color. Then I'm gonna press and hold shift to zoom in and slow my mouse down. I'm gonna go right on the edge of that pillar. Then I'm gonna grab this one and I'm gonna hold shift and put it right at the edge of that pillar. Now, you wanna be thoughtful about what you choose as your perspective. So I could choose the top of the pillars. I could choose right here. But what you wanna do is try to keep the line as far away as possible. I'm gonna assume that this track is relatively straight and that this line over here is gonna be a good perspective line. If it turns out that the track is on a curve, well, then that's not gonna work. Once again, I'll hold shift and then move that there, hold shift to zoom in a bit. And now I have these two perspective points. Now it's important to get the second perspective. So I'll go ahead and move this one right on this tile crack. And then I can move it farther over and put it right where it belongs there. So now I have that perspective line going across and I'm gonna go ahead and pick another one. And I could go ahead and pick this line, but you'll notice if I pick this line here, it's so short, it doesn't give me a really good accurate image. So what I want to do is try to find something a little longer. And so what I'll do is I'll go ahead and pick perhaps this line here, hold shift, move that in, and then I might move this line farther away. So I'll grab this one, hold shift, put it right there. And then you want that distance between the two points so you can get a more accurate perspective. Now what we want to do is go ahead and move this around to see how well it lines up. So notice that we're getting a little bit of distortion. Most of this is coming from lens distortion, so you can see that it's lining up pretty well, but every camera lens has a bit of distortion, especially on the edges of the lens. So I'd say this is pretty, this is pretty good and on point. And again, everything isn't gonna be perfectly square. So you can even see down on the subway tracks here, it's lining up pretty well right there along the edge. So I'd say we're pretty good and even though it's off a little bit right there, I think it's pretty accurate. So now this is all done, except you notice that the Z axis is pointed down. So if you're using a program like Blender, typically the Z axis is up. And if you're using a program like Maya, often the Y axis is up. Depending on which software you want to use, you want to flip that. So we can go ahead and just do negative Y. And now we have the Z axis pointed up. Then once again, we want to place it on the ground plane, wherever you want that origin to be. So if you were gonna start modeling at this pillar, we could place that right there and then go file, export, camera parameters, and we'll say subway. And we'll go ahead and save that. Let's look at one more example image in FSpy. So I'm gonna go file, new. We're gonna discard our changes. Go ahead and look at our photos here. And let's do something that has more vanishing points in it. So I'm gonna bring in this skyscrapers three point perspective. Once again, the image in FSpy comes in dimmed, so it's a little hard to see when you're trying to match the photo, so uncheck this box. So now I have all these buildings and different highways and crosswalks and windows to choose from, and I need to start lining up my lines. Now remember, a city is not on a perfect grid, so we have to kind of pay attention to what we're using. So I'm going to pick something that I think will work well. So I'm gonna go ahead and start right on these windows. I think this building over here will be a good spot for this perspective. Once again, hold shift 
then I can line that up a bit more. Pay attention to where the shadows are. Then I'll hold this one and I'll push shift. And then once again, pay attention to the shadows. And then I'll line this one up. And again, I want to be as far away as possible. So I'm going to go right there. And then I'll grab this point and bring it in up to here. Hold shift, pay attention to the shadow, and right there. So now I have that axis. I need an axis going back the other way. I have that right here, but it's a, it's a little short. Um, so I think I'm going to go ahead and assume these two buildings are pretty close together. They're probably pretty parallel. So I'm going to go ahead and assume that is the case. So I'm going to put this one up here right on that gray spot. And then I'll grab this one, hold shift and put it right there. Then I'm going to grab this point. And again, I want to be far away as possible. So I'll put that right there. And this one, I can't quite see with that pillar. So I'm going to move it in just a little bit. Press and hold shift. And we'll put that right there. Press and hold shift. Put that right there. So now I have these two uh, perspective lines. But if I click here, how do I get to three point perspective? There's no option. So the way to do it is to go to the principal point. And instead of using the image midpoint, we'll use the third vanishing point. So now what we can do is we get these other perspective lines. And most of the time, there's not enough distance for that third vanishing point. But in this particular case, we can go ahead and line this one up right on that line. Then we can bring it all the way down. And it's important to make this line long because we want to be nice and accurate. So we'll now we have that one lined up and then we can pick another line right over here on this building. So maybe to split the difference, we'll go ahead and grab a line on this building and then we'll zoom in and put that right on the crack by holding shift. So now we have all the pieces of our building. Notice how the buildings are going at an angle there. And so now if I move this around, all my axes are lined up. So that lines up there and even lines up over here, you can see how that building lines up. What's important is that the building is not falling over. Now this building may not be perpendicular or parallel to our other building, so it's twisted, but it is definitely not at an angle. So this building also should be straight up in the air, the same as this building. So generally we don't build buildings that are falling over, so you can be pretty confident that the vertical lines in an image are going to be okay. The same is for street lights. Unless the street light has been damaged, it's going to be pretty vertical. And so we'll be able to use that as a good reference point. Once again, we need to change the orientation. So I'll go ahead and make this negative Y. And now I have a Z axis that's going up. And once again, the ground plane is where we're going to start. So you can pick where you want that ground plane to be. Maybe you want to start modeling from the side of this subway entrance right there. And then we can go file export camera parameters and we'll call this city three point f spy so hopefully that shows you how you can use f spy to start matching photos remember it's super important to pick the right number of vanishing points and not try to cheat it and then you can always see the different options over here is these are can be copied directly into your 3d modeling program but both maya and blender have add-ons and scripts that can make that easier for you Happy 3D modeling.